Hello and welcome to the episode 176 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we get two tours, a historical satellite broadcast and some extra studio work. On the 25th of June 1960, the Silver Beatles performed for the fourth consecutive Saturday night at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Wallasey for another event organized by Les Dodd. The band featured George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, the Beatles, now with Paul McCartney on bass and Pete Best on drums, performed once again at the Top Ten Club for yet another night of their ongoing second residency in Hamburg, West Germany. In 1962, the same lineup of the band performed twice in the same day, after another lunchtime concert at the Coven Club in Liverpool, the Beatles were on the stage of the Plaza Ballroom in St. Helens for their first evening booking with Whetstone Entertainments. Before the gig, their manager Brian Epstein briefed the lads about the importance of the engagement, saying that the agency controlled 16 venues in the Northwest and that it was imperative to make a good impression. It was another cunning Epstein idea to push the Beatles to improve as fast as they could. Whetstone controlled indeed 16 venues, but 13 of those were exclusively devoted to bingo. No concert opportunity in sight there. Nevertheless, the night went well and the band was paid £25, about £540 in 2020 money. On the 25th of June 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, played the Astoria Ballroom in Middlesbrough. The Johnny Taylor Five, a local band, figured as support act. 1964. If it was true that Auckland didn't want the Beatles, as the city's inspector of police pointed out on the previous day, and as I reported in episode 175 of this very podcast, it was also true that having the fabs close could enhance a politician's profile. It was probably for this reason, then, that Auckland's mayor, Dov Meyer Robinson, held a civic reception with the band at the town hall today. Truth to be told, Mayor Robinson decided to go ahead with the event despite the opposition of a number of city council members, for the joy of the 7,000 fans who attended the reception outside the town hall. Later in the evening, the Beatles performed another two shows at the same town hall, again in front of a full house. Two years later, in 1966, the Fabs were still engaged in a tour, their last one. The Beatles arrived in Essen, West Germany, for a double show at the Gruga Halle, riding a train that was previously used by Queen Elizabeth II on her visit to that country. Each Beatle and each of the five people in their entourage had a personal suite on the train. In the evening, between the shows, the band held a press conference. After the second performance, they jumped back on the train to continue their trip through West Germany. 1967, as announced in episode 138 of What A Fab Day, the Beatles took part to the Our World television program the first ever worldwide broadcast using the satellite technology. The band had been chosen to be one of the English guests of the program, which also saw the participation of several international TV stations. ABC from Australia, ORF from Austria, CBC from Canada, ORTF from France, RAI from Italy, NHK from Japan, TS Mexicana from Mexico, TVE from Spain, SRT from Sweden, RTT from Tunisia, NET from USA, ARD from West Germany, plus the state televisions of the USSR, Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia and Hungary. Another 13 countries – Belgium, Bulgaria, Denmark, Finland, Ireland, Luxembourg, Monaco, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Romania, Switzerland and Yugoslavia 
accepted to broadcast the program despite not taking part to it directly. The potential viewers amounted to 500 million people. Only days ahead of the broadcast, though, the Iron Curtain countries decided to drop out in protest to the West Bloc response to the Six Day War, reducing the viewers to 350 million and forcing Danish DZR to contribute to the program as a last minute resort. The BBC broadcast their bit of the program between 7.55 and 10 pm. The program was divided into a number of subsections, each narrated in the local language. This moment's word, the hungry word, the crowded word, physical excellence, artistic excellence, and the word beyond. The Beatles went on air at 9.36 pm Greenwich Meridian time, concluding the UK Artistic Excellence section, which also included, in other countries, people like Pablo Picasso and Maria Callas. It was a 6 minute 11 second slot directed by Derek Burrell Davis from the EMI Studios, culminating with the performance of All You Need Is Love. The performance wasn't all live, though, with most of the previously recorded take 10 of the song being played as a backing track. All the vocals, the guitar solo, Paul's bass and Ringo's drums, as well as the 13-piece orchestra, were all recorded live on to take 58. It was not the spontaneous performance that the public thought, with rehearsals going on from 3 pm and tape material filmed from 5 pm, but it was nonetheless an incredible event and the Beatles were impeccable. The broadcast was a kind of studio party, with flowers and bright-coloured love writings on the studio walls, plus a host of famous friends or family members in attendance. Mick Jagger and Marianne Faithful, Keith Richard, Keith Moon, Eric Clapton, Patty Harrison, Jane Asher, Mike McCartney, Graham Nash, Gary Leeds and Hunter Davis were sitting on the studio floor, singing along and having a good time. At the end of the broadcast, when all the guests departed, John Lennon stayed behind to re-record some of his vocals for the song, due to be released as a single, with the session ending at 1 am. A copy of the footage of our world is deposited with the United Nations. 1968, while Paul McCartney flew to New York on his trip home, after the announcement of the plans for Apple Corps to several Capitol Records executives, two Beatles were busy in Abbey Road today. George Harrison produced another session with Jackie Lomax, playing guitar on Sour Milk Sea and on The Eagle Laughs At You, while John Lennon attended to the final mono and stereo mixdowns for Revolution 1 and Revolution 9, between 2 and 8 pm. On this occasion, Revolution 9 was edited down from 9 minutes 5 seconds to 8 minutes 12 seconds. My, this almost concludes this episode. The only thing left to do, if you are really fab, is heading to www.simonmas.com support and do anything you fancy to support this podcast. Your help will make the difference and will allow me to keep on going creating more and better music-related content. Thank you! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.